ministry which is uh, organizing this and which is the Nodal Ministry happens to be the Ministry of Renewable Energy, but I think this is one of the, the mission itself is one of the beautiful examples of what Prime Minister Modi often keeps reiterating the whole of government concept. And some of the projects in the Department of Science and the birth of National Hydrogen Mission and then got merged as a part of it in the spirit of working out of silos in a more integrated fashion. And added to that, when you have also have the stakeholders from the industry, I think it becomes an even better model of whole of government plus whole of nation, which actually is the appropriate global strategy if we have to move on and then we the target of 2047. I think uh, the mission itself and all of us who are sitting here are contributing to the task of uh, nation's uh, prestige, esteem and building in more ways than one. One of course, as all of us have been talking about clean energy, yes, not only hydrogen, we are also seeking to contribute to nuclear energy, you would recall that very recently, a few months back. This budget also announced the opening up of the nuclear sector to private players, which means that this government is very forthcoming as far as the extensive public-private participation is concerned. And why I'm referring to this is because I think this is something which nobody had expected, opening up the nuclear sector to the private players, because everybody was reconciled that this is something which is uh, sought to be worked behind a wheel of secrecy, and there was no demand either. So once you open up, actually the other day I was studying some of the industry shows that maybe you are not prepared, <laughs> the government was prepared. Now today if I say I'm going to open a nuclear plant, where do I find a private partner? But this not to guide them, I think in another four or five days they'll be in place because maybe we didn't have that political direction in which we started moving after 2014. And that realization that if we have to move on, we have to move on collectively. Similarly, the other sector of biotechnology. For the first time, I think we are among the very few countries in the world which have a dedicated, exclusive biotechnology policy called BioE3, which was also passed by the cabinet only a year or so back. Biotechnology for environment, for employment, for economy. And there too, we are in a big way experimenting with biofuels, uh, you'll be glad to know that we have also tried to give it a societal component engagement by reusing the cooked oil. And then I suggested because they were getting the cooked oil from the government kitchen, the government mess, etc. I suggested, no, we should get it from the housewives. And we are paying the rupees 20 per kilogram. And the idea was that when one of the boys goes and collects it for two, three days, fourth day, the housewife will ask him, Kaun sa murk hai, jo mene nali mein phenkna sa tel, uske 20 rupaya kilo de gaya. And that gives a lot of fairness, because unless you involve the society and make it a vast movement, and everybody realizes that they have a stake in clean energy, we would not be able to get the optimum results. Now, as far as the hydrogen mission is concerned, and I think of all the things, the other aspect that is also being very silently, subtly is being addressed is the geopolitical positioning of the country. So when we talk about Atmir Bharat, most of us are dealing with scientific streams. We need to also scientifically analyze what is the roadmap for that. It sounds very holy, very fanciful, very romantic saying so, but scientifically how do we reach there? So I think one of the key factors would be reducing our dependence on petroleum imports. And for that again we have to resort to all these means, so it's the hydrogen, whether it's a biofuel, whether it's a nuclear source. And more than us, or earlier than us, the countries which have been exporting their petroleum to us have begun to realize that. It's sometimes very amazing that they have started shifting their economy thrust from petroleum products to the other products. After having made a big fortune for decades together, now they realize that very soon we would be uh, losing out of the market. So I think it's high time and one 
Another thing which is also being simultaneously addressed through this mission and similar missions is that now under the present regime, India is no longer lagging behind others. We have had a very bad experience of IT which happened here almost a decade and a half later. But it's no longer so. When we when we started the black and white television, they were already using television for two decades and had graduated to the next level. So here we are now, whether it's a quantum mission, whether it's a hydrogen mission, whether it's a biotechnology, which is said to be the 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 next direct industrial revolution. And uh, it's said to be biotechnology driven as is the opinion across the world. And there's going to be a paradigm shift from the manufacturing sector to the recycling and regenerative processes. So we are already into it. We would not be carrying the dubious reference of having followed somebody. We are already early initiators. So, and as far as the hydrogen mission per se is concerned, the mission for advancement in high impact areas, the electric vehicle, where we again have industry plus the government sector coming together and the battery powered fuel cell electric vehicles. And very recently, as I was referring a few moments ago, the private sector was all prepared. So I think very thoughtfully and very courageously, government has rolled out as Prime Minister himself announced in the three-day Aztec and Cave, the one lakh crore RDI fund. So I think it's one of the rare occasions when government is funding the private sector. Usually the private sector is expected to fund it. But the idea is that, as I said, the private sector is not prepared. But though the industry is smart enough, the government is also not less smart. We are giving them money to attract them in the hope that tomorrow, day after tomorrow, then they will be funding the whole lot of it. So it's just initial incentivization because to initiate them into that in the hope that all of us then will be getting richer from each other. Now, the Department of Science and Technology had way back in 2018 envisaged this hydrogen fuel cell program. And therefore, which of course we were doing with the, in collaboration with IIT Bombay, which is uh, not known as Mumbai, still carries the old name like IIT Madras. So <laughs> incidentally, the IITs have refused to adopt the new name for the legacy region. So we were, we were there with them and also with NFT DC Hyderabad. And the mission innovation, I know how many of us in this room are aware, the mission innovation, the name itself was coined and suggested by Prime Minister Modi in one of the international meets. And that was uh, accepted and liked by everybody else, all the other delegates. So in Mission Innovation 2.0, we have also envisaged the target of uh, reducing green hydrogen cost to two US dollars per kilogram. So that is a very ambitious target, but once we've laid it, I'm sure all of us are working painstakingly. And a beautiful initiative, which the Honorable Minister also mentioned, which actually originated from the department where I work, was the Hydrogen Valley Innovation Clusters, which later on, of course, when the mission innovation, uh, sorry, mission hydrogen came in, it got amalgamated with that. And as the Honorable Minister said, we already thought of all. Again, what is notable is that in tune and tenor of the recent turn of uh, approach in the government functioning, it is going to have a huge, huge funding from non-government sources. So we have estimated a total amount of saved piece 485.32 crore, as much as 315, that means 315.43 crore will come from the other sources, and initial government uh, contribution will be around 169.89 or 170 crore. So this also aligns with our other recent initiatives like the National Research Foundation, which we have uh, given the Indian flavor named Anusandhan. Again, almost 60-70% of the resource would be from non-government entities. So I think now gradually the change of mindset has started happening. So we also as part of the society have to learn to depend less and less on the government. And many of the successful ventures in the West are totally away from the government uh, affiliation because they don't need to have. 
and uh, a successful investors would not have time to waste uh, walking in the corridors of the government secretaries, which is often the scene over here. So that is this partly began as a feudal mindset, partly then some unspoken interest. But today we don't have that. So I think change of mindset is something which would be required for the change of direction in which you started moving. So depending less and less on government and uh, creating a sustainable, self-sustainable ecosystem is what is uh, looked for. And that's why Prime Minister very thoughtfully announced this one lap road so that you learn to live on your own. And this is the initial push. And therefore, the, as uh, was also being said, the blueprint for hydrogen hubs has been laid down. And therefore, I think to conclude, the, one of the important components for the Vixit virus or a self-reliant virus would be a self-reliant hydrogen economy. And through this conclave and this morning, let's all go back with the pledge that we would target and work for a self-reliant hydrogen economy and create a role model for the rest of the world. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.